Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video I want to try to enlighten you. I want to try and explain why I think there are no such thing as weed species and why I think you should do everything in your power to speak to everybody you know about what they might perceive as a weed and try and convince them that they are indeed a vital wildflower. Now I'm currently knelt in part of a piece of mown grass area that I'm going to be turning into a wildflower meadow, um, a wildlife pond, wildlife banks, native tree and shrub areas, and it's going to be a really cracking project. And obviously stay tuned, tuned to the channel for the updates on this one. No doubt I won't be posting this, or by the time you see this, it will have been made a year ago. But I really, or that video it will have been made a year ago because I really want to document the transformation of some of these areas. This area behind me is about a third of an acre, but it's going to have such a massive difference for wildlife. However, what I wanted to show you before I get cracking is the amount of butterflies that are on these what are known as perennial sow thistles or weeds, as a lot of people would say. Now, perennial sow thistle, it doesn't sound too appealing. It sounds awful. It sounds like a weed species. And in many a year gone by, I'm sure many of you watching this would have happily pulled it out of your lawn, pulled it out of a crack in the paving and just completely um accepted the fact that it wasn't supposed to be there and it was a weed species well i hope by some of the footage that i'm going to show you guys today that i can change your mind because this is only one of an example of many many species of wildflowers that are absolutely vital for wildlife now at the moment this perennial south thistle is being visited by absolutely dozens of butterflies now they're all whites the majority of although i have seen a couple of small tortoiseshells on them um, but they are small whites, green vein whites, and large whites. And a little bit of bonus information for you, there is no such thing as a cabbage white in the UK. A cabbage white uh, does exist in America, which is in essence our small white, but a cabbage white in the UK is one of these three species, small white, green vein white, or large white, because of its association, obviously, with destroying. Let's not uh, <laughs> try to to uh, you know, disguise the fact that they do destroy our vegetables. However, I think if you can put some vegetables to one side and accept the fact they're going to be decimated by these caterpillars, you can expect these beautiful butterflies to grace your garden at certain times of the year as well. So not a bad thing, I don't think. But yes, these butterflies are the main three butterflies that are using these south thistles and they are all over them. now. I can't remember the last time I saw this many white butterflies uh, in one patch on one patch of plants. It really is fantastic to see. Now where I am, I'm actually in southeast Lincolnshire, so I'm surrounded right over there, you can probably make it out a little bit, by Fenland. So it's a lot of brassicas, so there's a lot of cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. So of course you get a big concentration of white butterflies in the wider countryside where you've got a lot of the larval food plants, but they are only in this garden not because there are cabbages and Brussels sprouts and broccoli in this garden, far from it. They are in this garden because of the nectar available in these wildflowers and a few other plants as well around the garden. Don't get me wrong, there are some Verbena bonariensis, my favourite non-native herbaceous perennial, and some Buddleia still in flower. And they are using those as well, but the majority of them, I hope you can see by the kind of small clouds of butterflies behind me, are using these sow thistles. So it's a really, really vital plant. And it's not just them as well. We've got little solitary bees using it. There's hoverflies using it for the pollen and nectar available. So, and it's just a brilliant place for them to sort of congregate to get the food they need to be able to survive. Because of course, the larval food plants are only one part of a butterfly's life cycle. They actually have nothing to do apart from the female laying eggs on them with the adult butterfly. The males, for example, will probably never see another cabbage or a Brussels sprout or a broccoli plant unless they are mating with a female on top of one. But the, the truth is that these butterflies are here because of the nectar and the food source available. And it's now the first week in September, and you would think that by September the butterflies are all over, they've all gone, whereas actually there's a lot of insects coming out. And indeed it is now that the third generation of these white butterflies are going to be emerging and obviously numbers are going to build throughout the month of September and then sort of peter out into October and November. 
because they have three generations a year. So they'll have a spring brood that kind of comes out in April, May time. Uh, they'll, they'll breed and then die. And then another generation will come out in sort of July time. And then obviously here we are a couple of months later again, we'll have the third brood of these white butterflies, which is where you get the biggest numbers of them because the numbers are built through the season. Then they'll no doubt get a bit of a hit through the winter time and the numbers will drop back down to then build up again from next spring. So it's a bit of a continuous cycle, a bit like the monarchs obviously and the painted ladies for you guys uh, watching from the States, you will know obviously the monarchs don't go from their overwintering grounds in uh, Mexico right the way up to North America in Canada and come back down again in one generation. It just simply doesn't happen. It's actually over four or five generations, I believe. So they will breed and keep traveling north as they go before the last generation will then obviously do that entire flight back to Mexico and um, around California, some of them over winter there as well, which is just incredible. I mean, how does that generation of butterfly know instinctively to fly south to those specific locations where they overwinter through the, through, through the winter months. It's just mind boggling. Anyway, that's one of the many wonders of the natural world. Um, so my advice to you guys is obviously if you wanna have scenes like this in your own garden, then leave some vegetation. Make sure you, that you've got plants right the way from early spring for pollinating insects. So right the way through uh, from February, uh, January even with things like snowdrops in your garden right the way through until September and October. October and then into November is usually when most of the insects will sort of fizzle out if you like in their adult form uh, but obviously the larvae will go on through the winter and create the next generation next generation next year. So by having plants available you can attract lots of wildlife to your garden for an extended period of time and that's the key to a successful wildlife garden because where there's insects for all those months of the year you'll find other predators as well and that's whether that's mammals whether that's birds whether that's dragonflies you know all these other um, animals and forms of wildlife are going to congregate where there are greater concentrations of insects so it's really really great to see this amount of butterflies in this small-ish area it's only probably about 20 or 30 square meters so something that most of us probably have in our own gardens but the key guys is to leave some vegetation like I say so my recent video I did about when to cut a wildflower meadow and how to manage it obviously it's a it's a variety of habitats that you should be looking to create through your um, through the year if you like in terms of leaving some areas mowing some areas because had you have gone by the book and mown by the 1st of September these guys wouldn't have been here so it's really important to leave some nectar and some standing flowers for as long as possible putting it simply wherever you are in the world if you see a flower in flower in September October and it's probably classed as a weed species then let it be because even the dandelions that are in the lawn um, just a few yards that way are in flower now and they're also being used by these white butterflies so it really is a case of just leave it and I bet you if it's a sunny day like this you'll have insects turn up because the natural insects the native insects to wherever you are around the world will have evolved to use these nectar and pollen sources that are available to them so it's really important to leave some of these species in your garden try to get out the mindset of it being neat and tidy and if you still can't do that and you can't commit to a full no mo summer like i've been banging on about all year and obviously drop some comments in the uh, box below to let me know how your no mo summer has been and how many insects and how much wildlife has been attracted to your garden um, then the the importance of that is vital like I say because if these had been mown down they wouldn't be here right now so it's really really key for you guys to leave some areas of vegetation longer grass as well for all the what I can hear here as here at the moment as crickets and grasshoppers which are obviously in the longer grassy areas um, and hopefully I really hope really really hope that you guys can start perceiving these weed species as wildflowers and vital wildflowers at that as well because there's a whole countryside out there and how many of these do you think are let to grow in all the agricultural fields that are currently turned over and brown and being sown with seeds obviously i uh, know we need to eat we need food we need crop production 
but obviously these are then becoming very barren areas at this time of year so the butterflies will disperse to find whatever nectar they can do to provide the food to provide the energy for them to go off mate and obviously out out uh, or out finish their lives basically so it's very very important to leave some of these wildflowers as i say and please spread the word and if you can't let your whole meadow grow that's the point i was trying to remember i was coming on to then mow paths through it or mow a section and just leave a section because you'll find that then that gives it some purpose some definition and if you just mow a path through it frame it mow around the edge of your borders it will look purposeful and i guarantee the neighbors will then look at that and think ah do you know what that's meant to be that is a purpose built habitat for wildlife i hope that's the idea anyway so yes i hope this video guys has given you some idea as to the importance of weed species and let's try and abolish that word because really a weed if you like is a plant in the wrong place in my eyes and uh, in my eyes even more so there are no such things as a plant in the wrong place if a plant is growing where it is chances are it's because the conditions are right for it so yes i hope this video has opened your eyes as to the importance of some of these wildflowers and please spread the message with your neighbors with your friends and family and try to get them to see these plants in a different light because it really will help our pollinating insects from bees to butterflies moths hoverflies everything in between so thank you so much for watching guys as always if you need any wildflowers and you're in the uk check out the wildergarden.com online shop where we do of course ship throughout the uk and you can get either seed plugs nine centimeter pots uh, and obviously pond liners bird food bird boxes a whole uh, host of wildlife products that will help you attract wildlife to your own garden so check it out but otherwise Thank you for watching guys feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give the video a like and i'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in your own garden in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon